Welcome to another edition of DYC TV with me, Brendan. And me, Kia. It's Friday, 13th of February 2015, and our theme today is love and hate. Coming up in today's show, we'll be taking a look at Valentine's Day, why do we celebrate it, and what does it mean to us. We'll be finding out about, about why love is so important to us here at DYC. With the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz concentration camp, we'll be taking a look at the Holocaust and its legacy. We'll be taking a look at the Anne Frank exhibition held here at DYCA. We'll be finding out about intolerance in Britain and what it means to DYCA staff and students. All this and more, stay tuned. Well, it's Friday the 13th. Today, and for some people, that means it's an unlucky day. That's right. And did you know there's a name for a fear of Friday the 13th? No, what is it? It's Paris Kevy Dacotriophobia. Paris Kevy Dacotriophobia? Yes, so now you know. I did not need to know that. Are you suspicious about Friday the 13th? Not really. You? No, but lots of people are, apparently. Around 20 million people in the United States are affected by a fear of this day, and some even avoid taking flights or even going out. Well, fortunately, we're not, we're not so superstitious here at DYCA, and we're all here for the last day of Block 5, Two blocks to go before the end of an academic year. Wow, it's also Valentine's Day tomorrow and we sent out our reporter to find out about the history of this celebration and what it means for DYCA staff and students. February the 14th, Valentine's Day. The celebration of love and affection has somewhat mysterious origin. Is it a Roman festival to celebrate fertility, or is it a festival to remember the martyrdom of Valentine of Turney? Or maybe it's to remember the martyrdom of Valentine of Rome? To be honest, no one really knows! All we know is it is it is tomorrow and lots of partners will be doing something special for the love in their life. Well, unless they got unlucky on Friday the 13th. Valentine's Day has evolved over the years and the way we remember it has slowly been brought together. In, in mid 18th century England, it was a popular custom to pass on love notes. This later developed and by 1847, an American company started ma mass producing Valentine's Day cards. By 1913, Valentine's Day became a flagship holiday together with Mother's Day and Father's Day. By the mid 1980s, Valentine's Day had become a fully commercialised event, and now Valentine's Day generates over a whopping one billion pounds, and over a billion cards will be sent this year, making it the second most card-heavy celebration after Christmas, of course. So, Valentine's Day has developed into something that that is commercially successful, helping multi-million pound companies become even richer. But, you have to admit, there's something wholly special about Valentine's Day. It is one of the only times in the year dedicated to love. But is it time Valentine's Day developed into something more purposeful? Syria, Nigeria, Ukraine, Egypt, Palestine. Maybe it's time for Valentine's Day next evolution, spreading love and hope for those in need. Imagine if people raised even a small percentage of the one billion pounds spent on Valentine's Day in support for people who were struggling worldwide. Now that's an idea worth celebrating. The point for DYCA TV, my name is Kaya Denise Bainbridge. On behalf of all of us here at DYCA TV, we'd like to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. On the subject of love, DYCA is the founding school of the Leaf Academy Trust. Leaf stands for love, enterprise, aspiration and faith. 
To find out why love is so important to the trust, we caught up with Miss McMullen. So Miss McMullen, how does love fit into DYCA and the Leaf Academy Trust? Well, the DYCA is the first of the Leaf Academy Trust academies. And the Leaf Academy Trust values are love, enterprise, aspiration and faith. And the value of love is very, very important at DYCA. And it comes directly, really, from when we were first set up and what we wanted to do. Some people think that love is, a, is all about Valentine's Day and it's all hearts and flowers and romantic and soft and cuddly and warm. But it's not. Love is about telling people the truth and it's about supporting them to be the very best they can be. It's about recognising that in every single person we deal with, we see the face of Christ and making sure that we do the best for people. And doing the best for people isn't being all soft and wishy-washy with them. Doing the best for people is telling them the truth and helping them be the best they can be. So sometimes we talk about tough love, mm -hmm. um, which actually means, you know, sometimes having to be really quite direct with people, quite harsh with people sometimes, but only because we love them and we care for them. We recognise they're a child of God and we want the very, very best for them. That's how love fits into DYCA. Thank you. Now, from love to hate. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz concentration camp. Auschwitz was one of the concentration camps built by the German Nazis during World War II to imprison and murder Jews and other minorities. The Nazis believed that members of ethnic minorities, as well as disabled people and other political groups, were inferior to Germans and set out murdering them on a massive scale. 70 years on, it is very hard for us to imagine how and why this disaster happened here in Europe and the effects of this period are still being felt today. Jews were the main group of victims and one of them in particular left a lasting legacy. Her name was Anne Frank and the diary she wrote about her experience of being in hiding in Amsterdam has become one of the most famous books of the 20th century. To celebrate her life and commemorate the event she was part of, we held an ex exhibition here at DYCA. We sent our reporter to find out more about the Holocaust and the DYCA and Frank exhibition. Hi, my name is Brandon and today I'm teaching a primary school about Anne Frank. It took me a while to prepare to teach these kids about Anne Frank because you had to learn like all these panels and all these pictures and what they exactly were and it's a very hard progress. We had, we had like a little booklet about what they said and as we every day we did it, you got you didn't really need the booklet. I don't need the booklet anymore because you can just read off the panels and like make your own sentences off of them. Today we're talking about Anne Frank, her family, a bit of World War One, her f um, and a bit of World War Two, and what Hitler w did not like and what he did not want in his country. So we are talking about the history of World War Two. Um, we've got a primary, we've got Rockwell Primary, and we're doing, um, we're teaching them about Anne Frank and Anne Frank Five, and um, about the Nazis and the Holocaust and the concentration camps. The Holocaust stands alone in its scale and horror, but unfortunately, it was not the last example of intolerance the world has known. Yes, intolerance still exists today, even in our country and sometimes in our own community. We decided to talk to our senior student leadership team about their thoughts and intolerance and their work to ensure that DYCA is a tolerant and fair community. We're the student senior leadership team and basically what this means for us is that we're sort of senior students, meaning that we get to help out in the academy and take some of the ideas that some students have and try to implement them. Stopping intolerance, we sort of help by seeing anything we see on the corridors happening. We try to make sure it's going all right. Yeah, we have a bullying committee as well. Um, some people are different. 
the shy ones. I think anyone can be a, a victim of uh, intolerance. Be a, a certain person. Yeah. Mm. yeah. They just look for reasons. Like even if you're exactly the same, a slight difference could cause. Yeah, it's yeah. not a set person. Everyone's experienced it. Yeah. Yeah. What I've noticed is like between friends, if there's like a breakup, then one person's gonna be left behind, and then everybody's like gonna be ignorant towards them, and then that's when it starts. Yeah. Not being able to understand people, and that's why you kind of judge them and already have a preset image, which leads to this intolerance. Yeah, pre-judging. Learning more about different cultures, maybe during form time rather than just in RE, and maybe having the assemblies dedicated to them and explaining why some people may be in this country and what their culture or religion actually stands for. Well, that's almost all we have time for on this episode. Just time for a quick word about Show of Tuesday, which will be on the 17th of February. Show of Tuesday, which of course is celebrated by eating pancakes here in the UK, is a feast held seven weeks before Easter. It marks the last day before the beginning of Lent, when Christians undergo a period of prayer, penance, repentance, atonement and self-denial. Yeah. On behalf of everyone here at DYCA TV, we would like to wish our Christian friends a happy Shrove Tuesday and a, and a reflective and meaningful Lent. Just time for a thought of the week. Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie once said, Until the philosophy which holds one race superior and another inferior is finally and permanently discredited and abandoned, the dream of lasting peace will remain, but a fleeting illusion to be pursued and but never attained. On behalf of everyone here at DYCA, we'd like to wish you a safe and happy week off. Until next time, goodbye. Bye.